Hi, I'm AJ and thanks for taking the time to check out my video. Really appreciate you taking this time out of your day. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that like button because you're going to like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. So this is part three of talking about cryptocurrencies. Uh, we first went into what is the definition of money. Uh, second video was what is the definition of investing. And this video will be about the definition of a cryptocurrency and whether or not you can actually invest in a cryptocurrency. So to start off, a cryptocurrency is a digital asset based on a technology called blockchain. Now we won't get into the details of what blockchain is in this video. Uh, we're gonna stick to first, you know, what a cryptocurrency is, what types of cryptocurrencies are available. Um, but just remember that blockchain is the underlying technology that helps cryptocurrencies run. So like the definition mentions, a cryptocurrency is a digital asset. That means it's software. You don't have an actual physical token or a physical coin. But this is the main distinction that makes cryptocurrencies different from any other type of currency. So your typical physical currency is made out of paper or metal coins. And usually each country has their own currency or they may use another country's currency as their main form of physical currency. There are currently 180 different currencies in the world, different types of physical currencies. But as far as cryptocurrencies, there are over 2000 types of cryptocurrencies. Now, as you can see, because it is a digital asset, it's software, it's something that can be easily duplicated as far as having different types of cryptocurrencies. Pretty much anyone can create their own currency. There are lots of companies out there, like I said, over 2000 that are at least recognized by uh, the website coinmarketcap.com. And so we'll get into uh, CoinMarketCap's list of the top cryptocurrencies based on their market cap. So the market cap for a cryptocurrency is the number of coins times the price per coin. So if you look at the top five, you have Bitcoin, whose market cap is over 120 billion, Ethereum, whose market cap is over 20 billion, Ripple, whose market cap is over 13 billion, Bitcoin Cash, whose market cap is over 6 billion, and Litecoin, whose market cap is over 5 billion. Now, those were the calculations at the time of the creation of this video and some of the screenshots that I'll go through throughout this video. So keep that in mind. That changes daily based on the fluctuations and the prices of the different cryptocurrencies. So that could be different at the time that you're watching this video. Now, if you look at the total market cap of the next 10 on the list, so number six through 15, the cryptocurrencies in this range have a total value of about $20 billion. And then once you look at the total number of cryptocurrencies, which is over 2000, there's a total market cap value of over 200 billion. I believe it was about 229 billion when I last looked. Now, if you look at the top five, you see that Bitcoin is number one. That is the original cryptocurrency. And it is also the cryptocurrency with the highest market cap. So you can see that based on the cryptocurrency, the values of those cryptocurrencies are typically based on which cryptocurrencies were created first. So Ethereum and Ripple and Litecoin, those were some of the first cryptocurrencies created. And so you also have the largest networks of people, thus the larger market cap for those currencies. The actual creator of Bitcoin, who was going by a pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto, actually revealed his name and he also revealed that he applied for a patent for Bitcoin. And so that was just in the last month or two that this occurred. And so there's actually a US patent for Bitcoin now that didn't exist before. So now we'll get into the main purpose of this three part series, which is, is investing in cryptocurrency, is it worth it? And is it really investing? So when we look at the definition of investing, which is allocating funds into an asset with the expectation that it's gonna grow in value over time, then we have to look at is cryptocurrency an investment or is it just money? And so based on one, the original purpose of Bitcoin, which was to be a form of money, a form of payment. And then you look at the definition of investing, cryptocurrency isn't a value generating asset. So while money is an asset, you can use money to trade or exchange for other assets. It is not a value generating asset. Just from having money, 
you don't generate additional value without putting that money into some other asset. So the same goes for cryptocurrency. The only difference is right now, because of the, the frenzy of uh, cryptocurrencies and the excitement from it, um, you get a lot of fluctuations in what the true value of cryptocurrencies are. So we'll talk mostly about Bitcoin since it is the original and it is also the currency with the largest network. Another reason I wouldn't really consider it uh, money necessarily either is because of the fluctuation between the values of the actual Bitcoin. So when you have $100, if you put it in a bank account, or if you're going to use it, let's say a year from now, for the most part, the amount of value that you can purchase or that you can exchange that $100 for, it's going to be about the same. Now, it may be a 1% or 2% difference because that is the target inflation rate with at least in the United States. So that means that the purchasing power of that $100 will drop by about 1% to 2% every year. Now, there is no expectation ever that a $100 bill will in two years be worth $200. So the way I look at Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies is it's, or Bitcoin specifically, I see it as more of a commodity. So it kind of moves in the same way that maybe gold or silver does. Gold used to be the backbone of the United States currency. So like I mentioned in the video where I talked about the history of money, uh, we used to use the gold standard uh, because the dollars that we had were based on an actual physical asset in gold. And based on the value that we saw in gold, that's what held the value of the US dollar. Another thing with gold is that whenever there are big drops in the stock market, you see that the value in gold actually increases. So it has an inverse relationship with the stock market. I've noticed um, every once in a while when there's a, a slight dip or there's some fear in the market. So whenever I would see a fluctuation like that, I would see that the value of Bitcoin would increase as well. And then just like with stocks, there could be some news article, just like when Craig Wright put in his patent, there was an increase in value of BSV. Within a couple of hours, it went up by 50%. And so that's not something that money would do uh, just because of some major announcement. Now, it would have to be something a lot bigger, like, you know, with a recession, that's something that can cause the value of the dollar or some other currency in another country to devalue because if you're just printing a lot of money then that's saying that that five dollars actually doesn't have any value because i can just go create another five dollars out of thin air and actually one of the main purposes of creating bitcoin was because it's going to be a set amount of coins it's not something that any one person can manipulate by printing more or creating more coins through software because there's this large network of people that are using it um, there would have to be a large takeover of the entire bitcoin network in order for someone to change either the amount of coins or whether uh, change the fact that a transaction occurred and wasn't tracked or it's being double counted uh, like the whole purpose of bitcoin and the blockchain technology really goes into that so won't really talk about that too much so when you look at those definitions and you think about investing in cryptocurrency, I'd like to compare it to, you know, would I invest in dollars? Like, would I put some type of asset specifically in U.S. dollars with the expectation that in five years or 10 years from now, that it's going to increase in value by 20% or 50% or even 100%. And my answer to that is no. So we can't really compare it directly to money, but we also can't really compare it directly to investing. With investing, you're putting your funds into something that is a value generating asset. So a Bitcoin on its own or any cryptocurrency, it doesn't actually create any value in of, a, of itself. So what you're really doing if you're putting money into any cryptocurrency is you're speculating. You're speculating that the value of that cryptocurrency is going to increase over a certain amount of time and you're trading. So it's not really investing, it's trading, it's pretty much gambling. You're speculating that it's going to increase in value. And most of the people that are trading are expecting some very high rate of return which can be kind of unrealistic. But when you look at, I'm going to post some charts. And when you look at the past history of the value of Bitcoin, it really puts in a perspective of 
people's expectations and you know where it started and where it is now so just even in the last couple of weeks uh bitcoin has gone from five thousand dollars per coin up to eight thousand dollars per coin now that's a huge change that's over a 50 percent increase in the value of bitcoin in just a couple of weeks and so that's not something you would expect with most stocks that's not something you would expect with any currency and so it's a very high risk it's, you're basically like i said you're speculating so it's a high risk investment and for most people this isn't something that you or i would recommend that you participate in now if you're really a believer in the technology behind it or if you're really a believer that bitcoin itself or one of the other cryptocurrencies is going to take over and people are never going to use physical currencies again then maybe it's a good thing to put your money into it but i would only put my money into it with the expectation that i can lose all of the money that i put into it and you know it wouldn't affect my day-to-day -day bills you know i'd still be able to pay my housing for food clothing shelter you know all of those things are taken care of and then i have this extra money that i'm actually investing i'm putting money in my 401k i'm putting money in my hsa i'm doing those lower risk investments first and then any extra money that i want to put into cryptocurrencies or bitcoin specifically or whatever you want to put your money in just know that it's a very high risk and the chances of you losing all or most of your money are very high so with all of that said if you're still interested and you know you haven't started with bitcoin and you just wanted to get started i hope this video was helpful i would also recommend that as a starting place if you use coinbase which is a cryptocurrency exchange this is where you can go and actually use your us currency or maybe euros depending on where you're located you can use your actual physical currency to go and buy other bitcoin litecoin or any of the cryptocurrencies out there uh, coinbase does not have every cryptocurrency on this platform and there are other platforms like kraken and hit btc and bitrex uh, there are many different types of platforms out there so make sure you do your research and to see which platform works best for you but i found that for most people the easiest platform to use is coinbase you can download it on your iphone or android phone and it works just like any other app or any other banking or a trading application that you may use and actually it works very similar to uh, those trading apps where you can buy partial shares of stocks so like m1 finance and stockpile if you only have ten dollars or twenty dollars you can still put that money into the type of currency that they have available and it will buy a piece of that coin and you'll have that in your account so if you're interested in using coinbase i do recommend that app for most beginners and then as you learn more on your own you can decide on other applications or other exchanges that work best for you um, there will be a link in the description uh, if you use my link you'll get a bonus for signing up so make sure you check down below for that link and with any investments or any cryptocurrencies i don't endorse any particular one uh, this is an educational just to let you know what is out there what platforms are available for you to use so go in at your own risk all right so this was part three i really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch this video if you haven't seen part one or part two make sure you check those out i have the links in the description down below as well thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video you really could have been doing anything with your time if you're not a current subscriber make sure you hit that subscribe button down below hit that like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time i create a video Again, thanks for taking this time out of your day. You guys have a great day. Thanks.